Look who it is. Running into you in a place like this? I can see you two still love wandering around. Oh, it's Dia! Hmm. Since when are we just wandering around? We're usually taking care of some serious business. Even though it may have nothing to do with our journey. But never mind that. What brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. Nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there, chatting away. What were you two talking about anyway? Huh? Y you serious? Can't say I saw that coming. Mm, but you are travelers after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey, how about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry, we'll come back to see everyone when we get a chance. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> by the way, should we go say bye to Nahida? I agree with you. I'm not gonna pull because I already pulled for the uh, Kokomi's donut. <laughs> I gotta save for the Archon. Oh, good point. Then there's no need to bother her in the real world. Then I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. 
Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. Uh, whatchamacallit? The boat. Oh, yeah, she does. Take your true form. No touching. <laughs> Next on the agenda. Beautiful treasures are a cause for great happiness. Schedule. Oh, probably. I, I don't even have child. Kathy, yeah, get in the game. 4.0 is released. There's content again after, well, like, dry, like, three patches out. a photo of this map because I need to update it on the on the website so I can keep track of it although I'm still missing a quite a few from Sumeru
Oh yeah, Cassia, by the way, you get a free, um, Lynette. Where is she? You get her for free. information at this point. Yeah, the more we can learn, the better. So, what do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Nahida said that she has a very unique personality. Whatever that means. You know what's sad? The VA that does the English uh, voice for Paimon, she hasn't been paid for seven months. And then there's a second issue about um, Hoyoverse that if they do this, uh, what they're about that they're um, doing research on, I will literally like stop supporting Hoyoverse if they start doing this. They will. Uh, they're starting to do uh, AI voice research because they want to. I think they are doing that research in order to uh, replace um, voice actors. Yeah, once Hoyover starts implementing um, AI voice, uh, well, start using AI voice for their, for all their games. I'm just gonna stop supporting Hoyover altogether. That's just dumb. God, start with the nation's people. There seems to be some locals talking over there. Let's go see if we can join the party. Well, they're about to. And also, second, the the first thing I was talking about how the Pymon's uh, VA wasn't paid for seven months. That was in Hoyoverse that hasn't paid um the the VA. It was like. When it comes to like English voice acting, the Hoyoverse contract the voice acting at a third party in the States and then that third party uh, asked the VAs to do the recording session and then once they have all the, the lines, they send it back to Hoyoverse and then but that third party are, are the ones that are supposed to be paying the, the VAs. So in other words, um, the Paimon's VA wasn't getting paid by that third party, and then now Hoyoverse uh, found out about it, and they're trying to communicate with that third party to tell them, it's like, hey, why aren't you paying them? We already paid you. At least Hoyoverse at that point, like, they're already, like, trying to fix the situation, but at the same time, the the AI voice uh, programming research, that's going a bit too far, to be honest. If you ask me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. No, they're actually testing it first on the Chinese voice actors right now. Not on English. But... I think the VAs need to uni- the, the VAs for English, they have to unionize. 
I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you too? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. Uh, hi. <laughs> We're travelers new to Fontaine, and we had something we wanted to ask, but you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> My opinion on Lisa? Uh, she's good until... She's still good right now, but you still need that constellation where um she reduces uh, the enemy's defense. Once you have that constellation, she's like... A uh, play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like, a real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. Well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is splendid enough. Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. You probably don't know that the Fontaine Court of Justice is called the Opera Epicles, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. But, uh, shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously than that? Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things, it's just that putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. You could say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellette, as well as the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. Between the machine and the Chief Justice, false charges and injustice are a thing of the past now. Oh yeah, I need to double check how much space is taking. Even though I have this game on the uh, on a different different um, hard drive device. This one I have it on the M.2, but I do have other games on my SSD card, so I got to check how much space uh, Genshin is taking. Probably a lot more than Honkai Impact. Pure trees? Is it some kind of machine too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance. Give me a second. Wait, Paimon almost forgot to ask you our question. Um, do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Oh, that's easy. Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. New event has already been out. Huh. I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots available. Huh. Is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? Wait, did you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time to time, people can't get enough of her. Huh. First time Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. <gasps> Wait! Paimon gets now! Archon is kind of like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. 
Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellet. <laughs> Come on. Sure, there's a lot of laws here. But nobody's going to be arrested for saying something disrespectful about the Hydro Archon. Alright! I think we get it. Thank you! At least we now know that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. But who knows how long making an appointment will take? <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. Hey! What are you looking over there for? Huh. Maybe something's the matter. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? Uh, maybe we better go check on her. Alright, you want to check the banner? There you go. It's, uh... Uh, Linne and Yelon. So the banner says Lynette, uh, Barbara, and... Bennett. I don't know why they put two healers on the banner. That's pretty dumb. Even for me, I wouldn't even pull for this. Although they give you like two bows, these bows are really good. The four star weapons are pretty good. Um. I may top this in a bit. Just to have it ready for the Hydro Hark on. Such a bad banner. Two healers, four stars. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Sure. I'm fine. Thanks. Oh, okay then. We just noticed that you seem to be worried about something. About many things, actually. But there's nothing I can do but just keep my troubles to myself. I was just reminiscing about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? Uh, you're pointing at the sea. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that you and your brother lived in the water? No people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now, it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly. And the air was filled with the scent of the sea. But now, the water is gradually swallowing our memories. <sighs> it won't be long before it swallows us. Uh, sorry. Paimon doesn't really get what you mean. Ah, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friends? Oh, and you are? Thanks for looking after my sister. She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood, that's all. There's no need for any concern. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. If I had to guess, I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. We just arrived in Fontaine. We were just talking with your sister. Uh... Even though we didn't really get what she was saying. Hmm, I see. It's unusual for Lynette to be so willing to talk with anyone. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us! Paimon's always the 
everyone talking for some reason. <laughs> so that's how you think it is? I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. <laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. <laughs> so, what did Lynette mean just now when she said that the water is engulfing your memories? And that it won't be long before it engulfs you too? Oh, that. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of uncertainty. There's no doubt about what's happening in Fontaine now. Where to begin? Hmm... Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Uh, did all the introductions earlier not count? Hello, Traveler. And hello, Paimon. <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. Still suspicious of him. I think he planted a bug. Oh, alright then. Well, Paimon's just happy to have a local friend now. By the way, we were just getting ready to go to the Opera House to meet the Hydro Archon. Would you be able to show us the way? Oh, so you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Please, follow me. He's acting way too suspicious. I still think he bugged us. He planted a bug on us. Uh, you said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. in hand and those with nothing at all raise your glasses in celebration if you don't have one then just raise your hand and kneel oh she's very cheeky as you can all see two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation come let us make a toast in honor of this traveler and her companion who have journeyed here from distant lands. Uh, is she talking about us? I've long heard of the turmoil and chaos you've left in your wake as you visited other nations. But I welcome you nevertheless. No, I have come to receive you personally. Fear is for insignificant cowards. 
I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion of such meaningless wariness. You can be rest assured, I see clearly your sincerity. Of course, seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> correct banner. I, Thosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Yeah, Paimon still can't believe it. Feels like we've only been here for a few minutes. But the Hydro Archon's entrance was... Uh... How should Paimon describe it? A little... Over the top? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, Miss Hydro Icon? How did you know we were coming? Ah, I see. As Outlanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic understanding. Don't forget that even the gods can be divided into the mediocre and the excellent. I suppose it's only natural for you to be awestruck by my abilities. You had best stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? All it takes is a flick of my finger for me to know everything about you. Oh, talk about sounding high and mighty. It feels like she can't get over herself. That's what I said earlier. ceremony still isn't enough? Hmm, what else should I say then? Uh, is she waiting for us to start talking? Wow, I didn't expect to see Lady Farina here. What a surprise! Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? How did I not notice before? Hey, what's all the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course. That's the blonde traveler. The one all those stories are about. Lady Farina came here to personally see her. Oh, I bet this is going to be the duel of the century. Ooh, I've got to see this. I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint. <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now. My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all their ruckus. You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another land, just as you were hoping to see. Uh, now she wants to... To fight? Aren't we getting a little ahead of ourselves? Fighting gods? I got a resume. <laughs> it's true. Hmm? <laughs> Are you not afraid? Might I remind you that this is a duel against the divine? What are you trying to do, Traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? <clears throat> Stand down, Clorend. I admire her bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. She is obviously a true warrior. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled, and a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement. She's just running away because I have Raiden and Shogun in my party. Oh, yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that interesting. <sighs> On Araneus, criminals are always requesting duels to defend their honor. I'm getting a bit old, to tell the truth. Oh god, these people sound so American. Oh my god. You see, then as the god of justice, I shall face this traveler in another kind of duel. A duel in court! Yep, this is not France, this is America. Ooh, all right! Now that'll be worth seeing! Right. This is Fontaine, after all. It's such a grand opera house, it would be a pity not to use it. Why do you care so much about the crowd's reactions? Seems you've spent a little too much time in the opera house. Besides, how exactly do you plan to have a duel in court? You mean you're going to put us on trial? <laughs> oh, we have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, isn't it? According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Oh, so that's what they've done wrong. Mm, that's our lady Farina. No one knows the laws of Fontaine like she does. You call that obvious? What kind of law is that? Wait, flying object? <gasps> you mean Paimon? Precisely! Now, if you two have no objections, then, in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest. My apologies, Lady Farina. I don't mean to spoil the fun. But if you would allow me to interject, I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. You tell her, Linny! Finally, someone who's not crazy. How could anyone call Paimon a flying object? Ah... Great magician, Linny, my beloved citizen. I'll permit you to object, but how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? <laughs> As a magician who just rained on your parade, I naturally should shoulder the responsibility of saving the show. So, with such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. There. As you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. This rope has been in the Traveler's hand all along. It was just that no one could see it before. Oh, you're gonna buy a cosplay? Ooh, I wish I could afford a cosplay, but I can't. Right, not right now. <laughs> you call that magic? <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Nice one. Huh. I'm not sure what to think. It seems Lady Farina's charges no longer hold water. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> amusing. Very amusing, Minnie. Just the sort of unexpected twist that I enjoy. With you here, today's performance can finally be called complete. Performance? 
you see all this as a performance? In which case, consider the matter of your trial resolved. The God of Justice will not bring charges against an innocent person. But when there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your upcoming performance at the Opera House, Mr. Linny and Miss Lynette. That's enough for now. Toodaloo! Future Paimon. That whole scene just now was really. <sighs> that was like the most awkward uh, event. Give it to Hoyoverse for coming up something like that. Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, yeah. so I did a little <laughs> preparation just in case. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. So, now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina is? She can be a bit confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. Anyway, Paimon had no idea you were a magician, Linny. It sounded like you'll be performing at the Opera House, right? <laughs> I just know a few simple tricks I use to make a living. Lynette is my assistant. It will actually be my first time performing on the most prestigious stage in Fontaine, the Opera House. But isn't the Opera House where criminal trials are held in Fontaine? When there are no public trials being held, the Opera House hosts a variety of other performances. To the people of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can be a little blurred. And speaking of performances, I would be remiss to forego this opportunity gifted by fate. Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? My brother's always excited to make new friends. Oh, sure. We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway. Splendid. In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of. Oh, you really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. Huh? What are they going to use it for? About that. Hmm. You asked me before about the prophecy, right? Let me start by telling you a little more about what it entails. Actually, not a Gucci bag. It's called a... Uh, oh, what's the name of that brand? Um, a Balenciaga bag. I'm not sure exactly when it began, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. That sounds pretty gloomy. Why are people in Fontaine born with sin? What is that supposed to mean? There are lots of guesses. Some say that the ancestors of Fontaine stole the power of the seas and stirred its wrath. Others say that the people of Fontaine never heeded the first Hydro Archon's warnings and offended Celestia. 
But here in Fontaine, evidence is what matters. There hasn't been concrete evidence for any of these claims, so they can only be regarded as conjecture. If even the people in Fontaine don't know what sin they committed, wouldn't it be better just to ignore the prophecy completely? Why bother feeling guilty all the time? That's exactly what the people did at first. But in the last few years, the water levels in Fontaine have actually started rising. Hmm. Many places have already been completely submerged, and now lie beneath the sea. Many people carry on with their lives as before and shrug it off as a natural phenomenon. But my family and I think that the people of Fontaine shouldn't ignore the possibility, which would end up sentencing them to death. We hope that at least the people who reside near the waterfront can move away before it's too late. So, we've started distributing magic pockets to them. As a magical item, these magic pockets have astonishing capacity. I'm sure they will come in handy when people are moving their belongings. Oh, Paimon gets it! It's like preparing for a rainy day! But this is more than a bit of rain. Hmm. Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> But who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you'd like to help, then please give these magic pockets to anyone nearby. Be sure to convince them to take it, regardless of what they say. 